Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, June 21st, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today's diary, I wrote up a Suricata alert that sort of caught my eye recently, and it's about a TCP option with invalid length. Truth being told, not really sure what this is all about, how bad it is, or what the attacker, if it is an attacker, is trying to accomplish here. The symptom really comes down to that it's SYN packets with an invalid short TCP fast open option. The purpose of TCP fast open in short is to make TCP more efficient by being able to send data on SYN and have it processed right away if multiple connections are opened by a particular client to a particular server. But in this case, the option is certainly used incorrectly. Not really sure what the effect would be. There are other indications uh, in the packet that it is likely spoofed. Just looking for input here. If anybody has seen something similar, maybe anybody has seen outbound traffic like this, it could be fingerprinting, could be some attempt at a denial of service, or it could just be a defective uh, TCP stack sending out these packets. So let me know uh, if you have any ideas of what it's all about. And uh, sample PCAP is also included included with uh, the diary post. Well, remember Petit Potom, uh, the NTLM relay attack? We now have sort of a little variation of that, yet another way to exploit this basic vulnerability. So yet another reason to disable NTLM on your domain controllers and extending extended protection for authentication and signing features. This new variety of the attack uh, was documented by Philip Dragovich and uh, he used the Microsoft distributed file system in order to uh, launch the attack. So the main point here is if you implemented workarounds that are very specifically uh, blocking, for example, some of the RPC uh, calls and such that are being used by Petit Potom, uh, well, uh, this new version of the attack is able to bypass these controls. As part of the show notes, I'll not just link to the GitHub repository that describes this new DFS course attack, but also to the mitigating NTLM relay attacks and Active Directory certificate services knowledge base article that Microsoft came up with. Because that advice is still valid, it still should protect this new attack. And talking about advisories from Microsoft, Microsoft uh, today published an emergency update for Windows, but it only affects ARM devices. So I think this is mostly some of the Surface tablets that came out uh, with ARM processors. Maybe if you are running, for example, a Windows virtual machine on an Apple M1 processor system or so you may be using Windows for ARM. But the problem here is that the June update did break authentication with Azure Active Directory and Microsoft 365. There have been some workarounds, but this is now the official patch for it. So if you have one of those devices applied, but I think the user base is probably still pretty small for ARM devices running Windows. And back in February, Apple patched a vulnerability in Safari and stated at the time that this vulnerability may have already been exploited in the wild. This was also remarkable because this was the single vulnerability being addressed by this particular update and also affecting iOS, iPad OS, not just Mac OS. Well, Google Project Zero now has a nice dissection of the vulnerability. So what exactly went wrong here? How the use after free vulnerability in this case may be exploited. So if you're into exploit development, this is sort of one of those must read posts. And one of the big items of the June update was that the Internet Explorer is now officially no longer supported and being removed. Now, 
This, of course, um, caused a lot of uh, people uh, to uh, rejoice, uh, given that the Inner Explorer has sort of uh, been fading over the last few years anyway. But uh, among all of the joy of losing an Explorer, one has to remember that some of the underlying libraries, in particular the MSHTML library, which actually was often the source of these vulnerabilities, is still on the system and may still be used by other software to render HTML. So yes, we are not quite done with it yet. Uh, of course, hopefully Microsoft will continue to provide timely updates, which I have no indication that they won't. It's still a valid library on the system. Smaller attack surface, but certainly there is still some significant attack surface left. And well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.